Hi, I'm David Gordon. I'm a senior consulting architect with the Enterprise Integration Practice at Red Hat. Hi, I'm Maliat. I work with consulting in the Northeast region of Red Hat. So Maliat, what have you been working on lately? I'm working at a new consulting engagement that is focused on migrating to microservices. Oh, interesting. Can you elaborate a little bit on the mi migration? Sure. So my team uh, wants to migrate to um, the cloud in, and, and while adopting microservices. Their strategy is cloud native, so I'm thinking that I'm going to recommend OpenShift to them. Do you think that's going to support their strategy? While containers aren't the only way to deploy to the cloud, of course, um, a container platform can enable sort of a, a consistent deployment model across um, diverse uh, infrastructure targets, right? Like hybrid cloud or multi-cloud. Um, so yeah, I, th I think it could be a good fit. Awesome, and my team also wants to support uh, multiple cloud vendors simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a trend right now? Yeah, kind of. I see that at a, at a, at a, um, with a lot of teams, right? Um, they sort of want to um, avoid vendor lock-in, so they're actually deploying to, to many clouds at the same time. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's awesome. My team is definitely interested in migrating to microservices architecture sooner or later. Um, now, for the sake of argument, let's assume that we were to take whatever services implementation they have and, and deploy that onto the cloud platform, would you say that would require less work or it would the, the amount of effort would probably be the same as fully decomposing the, um, the services? Right. Um, right. So the, the kind of strategy that, that you described where we take a workload and, and migrate it to a container platform with just the minimal changes, um, it, we often call that a lift and shift. And it, it might be a good strategy, right? It, it, probably will involve less effort than decomposing. Um, so I think it's important to keep in mind the with, with microservices, really the motivation is delivering software faster, right? So the idea is that um, we have independent, um, self-sufficient teams that are releasing components on an independent uh, life cycle, right? As opposed to with the monolith, we had to kind of scale our team vertically um, and everybody has to coordinate with each other, right? So there's a little bit of overhead there. Right? Right. So it's, it's, it's about cultural change, really. And um, we have to make sure that the, that the team we're working with um, is ready for that cultural change and understands what it means. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. To answer your question about the effort yeah. part, though, um, so whether we decompose or um, you know kind of just do a lift and shift, I think there are still some changes I involved, right? Either way to the workload. Right, yeah. and I do agree with that. I think there will be changes, um, w whichever whichever stra strategy we choose to go with. Mm -hmm. Also, I, another thing I noticed about uh, the services at my customers mm -hmm. is that um, their services are writing logs to a static location, and they also don't have health check for those services. So I was wondering if we were to go forward with containerization, is there a specific set of capabilities that we should really focus on? Yeah, so I, um, I think about observability in general, right? Um, with a monolith, we only kind of had to keep track of one thing, <laughs> and with the uh, service, uh, you know, microservices, we um, we have to keep track of a bunch of different components, right? Um, so instrumenting these in a way that exposes, you know, um, exposes uh, metrics and um, tracing things like that um, becomes really important, um, especially when we're when we're highly decomposed. I see. Actually, um, I was working with Istio recently, mm -hmm. and some of the things that you mentioned, Istio actually supports those. So, for example, it uh, uses Jaeger for tracing um, and Prometheus for uh, metrics aggregation, and then it uses Grafana and Kiali to visualize all of the data very nicely. So, would you recommend Istio? Uh, yeah, I think that's an important connection to make, right? Um, so, uh, the idea with Service Mesh is that uh, we we want to minimize the repetition in each individual component, right? We don't want to implement these things each time um, in each different service. So um, so with Istio, we're using a sidecar pattern. Um, so essentially, with each pod that we deploy, um, Istio is uh, is injecting these sidecar containers um, automatically, which take care of a lot of the instrumentation. And actually, the traffic, the service to service traffic. 
um, is actually moving through these sidecar containers, right? And, and these containers are communicating with the Istio control plane um, to get configuration. So you sort of have this central point of control there. I see. Yeah. Istio does seem like it's going to meet all those requirements and give us all the capabilities that we need. That is awesome. So I was wondering if there is any other capabilities that we need to successfully adopt microservices? Yeah, so um, automation um, and DevOps really come to mind, right? So um, with the monolith, we probably only had one pipeline because we were just deploying one artifact, right? Mm -hmm. But um, with microservices, we probably have a pipeline for each one of these components. So not only is it important to think about the automation that, um, that helps us deploy each of these components. Um, we also maybe even have to think about automation for provisioning a new pipeline. Because um, uh, we might be adding services as, as we go, you know, very frequently, right? Right, yeah. right. So automation is definitely going to be helpful for actually scalability. Um, my team was also interested in um, being able to scale their workload um, on demand. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking that maybe decomposition is going to be very helpful for that. It's actually going to make scaling things much easier. Really? Can, can you help uh, explain that a little bit? Yeah, sure. Um, so if we have multiple services, um, if we have microservices, and m one of the services is under sudden workload, mm -hmm. then we can only scale that service instead of having to scale all the other services at the same time. That is a great point, yeah. So when I think of cloud native, um, I think about elasticity. Right um, and scaling on demand for sure. I think that's a big that's a big part of cloud native. Um, and you're right. You know uh, when we talk about elasticity elasticity in the monolith, we're we're talking about scaling the whole thing. We really only have one container to scale, right? But we might have a whole bunch more uh, scale points in this case. So it's another maybe part of the argument why microservices could be a good fit for the cloud. Right. That is awesome. Thank you so much, David, for discussing the principles of instrumenting microservices on the cloud. If you'd like to learn more about this topic, please talk to your uh, Red Hat account executive or reach out to redhat.com services.